There we go. So, uh, welcome to the Learn to Code podcast. Uh, here, I am going to record my newest episode. That's going to be Amazon Kindle book writing. Um, I'm using the phone this time. Uh, I am trying to see if I can just record this episode using a lavalier microphone. So that's what I'm using right now. You are watching at my phone on the video. Um, so in order to create a new episode, uh, I am just watching uh, my technical dev episode. Not many people listen to that one. Uh, I cannot blame them. It's quite depressing. Uh, but I'm planning to lighten up uh, the mood with this new one. So let's try to record one by pressing the plus button. And here you can see the interface and you can just uh, start recording the episode, uh, your podcast episode by pressing the recording button, the red, bo the red one there. So you just press that. And welcome to the Learn to Code podcast. Today's episode is going to be about uh, my experience writing an Amazon Kindle book. Uh, you may recently know um, I've been uh, looking for a job recently. And from time to time, I decided to, you know what, um, I've been reading uh, the Kindle book a lot, so why not write my own books? And that's what we are going to be talking about today. And there we go. So I wonder if I can just listen to this. Let me, uh, I guess I need to take out the microphone, because if I try to play this back, uh, it's going to try to send the signal through the lavalier microphone. So I just uh, needed to disconnect that thing so I can play this. And welcome to the Learn to Code podcast. Today's episode is going to be about uh, my experience writing an Amazon Kindle book. So as you uh, can you see, um, the sound is quite good, I guess, uh, for the lavalier microphone anyway. So I'm connecting the lavalier microphone again and pressing the save button that's the purple uh, button on the right. There we go. So since this is a new episode and this is the first segment for this episode, I am asked to type in uh, what's the name of the segment. Mm -hmm. And let's type in like, uh, uh, oh wait, okay. Writing an Amazon. Kindle book. And as you can see, it's actually processing the audio. And at the same time, I guess it's actually uploading the, the audio to the Anchor, to the anchor uh, platform, uh, writing an Amazon Kindle book. So we do have uh, our first segment here. So if you wish to just publish this as an episode, you can do so by pushing the, the purple publish button on the top. Uh, yet, uh, this is just a segment. Uh, recording in the Anchor app allows you to basically uh, record little segments of whatever you're doing here. So if you don't feel confident about what you're about to say, you can just record a little, uh, a little segment and just say the episode without publishing. And whenever you feel ready to record another segment, you can just uh, talk again. This is really good for, uh, not just for a podcast uh, app, uh, but this is really great for people that wish to um, uh, record an audio log, especially for researchers. And you can actually publish your audio notes on the internet really easily with this. Um, maybe I wish to do something like that in the future, uh, especially now that I wish to uh, document my experience as a, an Amazon writer. So yeah, why not? So let's record another segment. Um, it's as easily as uh, push the purple button again. So if you already have a, a segment that you wish to include and you already uh, recorded before in another episode even, you can push the uh, the library button here and choose whatever section you may have recorded previously. Um, there we go. I do have a lot of sections here. 
Uh, yours may be empty if your account is actually new, uh, but that doesn't matter. Uh, you may actually uh, uh, choose interludes. Um, those are little sound bites, sound bites uh, that may allow you to uh, to decorate your podcast. I don't usually use them because uh, uh, I believe that uh, just talking is more than enough for me, I guess. So let's record another section here. Uh, let me see. Let's, um, I just recorded the introduction. So let's push the purple button again. And now let's uh, begin recording again uh, with the record button, the red one in the middle. So last week, uh, after finding myself with really nothing to do at the office, uh, I decided to bring my Kindle um, uh, with me at the office. And I decided to read, uh, to finish it reading some books there. Um, I am currently reading uh, a book named Coders at Work, which is basically a compilation of interviews with uh, very famous uh, coders and programmers. I just uh, finished reading the interview um, with uh, one of the co-creators of, co of the C programming language. Quite an interesting reading. And, and I managed to finish three books in a single week uh, just by sitting there and reading the books. And I realized that, you know what? Uh, every single time that I finish one of those three books, uh, I was telling myself the same thing. I may like to learn how to actually write one of those books. And I think it would be really fun to, uh, to write something simple for myself and copy the file or the text into my Kindle and read it there. <laughs> I think it's going to be, I, I guess it's, uh, it's like trying to make your own video game and only yourself, uh, only your, yourself are, is going to be able to actually play it. Um, uh, more often than not, when you do your own video game or you write your own content for yourself, uh, the quality is really low because you don't really have an incentive to, to create something really, really good for yourself. Uh, Yet in this case, since I decided to create a book about uh, uh, a topic of my interest and I find out myself focusing a lot of effort into this little bread project of mine. So after reading uh, my last book uh, last week, that was a Monday, I believe, uh, I decided, you know what, I may like to learn how to actually write one uh, an, an Amazon Kindle book um, so I can have fun myself uh, for the rest of the week until the end of the month, um, which by the end of this month, I should be looking for a new job because uh, I need to eat and that's something that I need to face sooner or later and I'd rather do it sooner than later. So m moving on with the topic. Uh, I did some research. I did find out a couple of applications. Uh, there is one called Kindle Create, which is basically a, a word processor uh, that allows you to export your work into uh, the Kindle format. It was very, um, I do have fixed uh, mixed feelings about it. And I may like to talk about that um, in just a second. There we go. Hmm? Okay, so uh, I just recorded another segment. Let's save that one. Okay, so after reading after after reading a book, I wonder how to write one. Uh, this I guess this is a question. So let's add this little bit to the episode, and let's see. And this section is actually uh, being processed, 
So very nice so far. So uh, and you can continue recording these segments uh, one at a time. You can actually uh, save this for later, as I say before. Um, in my case, I find uh, better relaxing to just talk my mind about something that I am interested in uh, and just push the publish button once I'm finished. So before recording uh, every little segment, I do question myself something about the subject I'm talking about. And then I try to elaborate about, uh, about it, maybe give it my personal opinion. Uh, most of the time, I do really ignore a lot of the details about um, the subject I'm talking about. I am speaking pretty much like a regular human being that does have some interest in the subject, yet my uh, I know expert by no means. Even when uh, software development um, does interest me a lot, and I've been working as a software developer my entire life, um, there comes times that I just feel lost uh, even when I'm trying to do my best effort about it. So in the last episode, you can actually uh, uh, listen to what I think of my last failure in the software development field. So, uh, yet many things change. And if, if there is something that we need to remember is that um, People change and they change really fast, especially with uh, when emotional emotions are involved. Um, I may say that uh, the more emotional uh, a person is, uh, most probably um, uh, the most ephemeral that uh, that state is going to be. So, if that makes any sense. So let's record another section here. Again. Um, I just talked about how it, how I decided to start uh, writing a book. So let's record another segment. Uh, so uh, I began making some research, obviously, and I found out that there are a couple of uh, applications that you can actually use to write a book. Uh, the first one that I actually tried was not the Kindle Create, was basically uh, Microsoft Word. Um, you basically say your you can say your book as a docx uh, file that's a word document and you can actually uh, uh, import that file using uh, kindle create and then you can export that into the actual amazon kindle format uh, i find uh, uh, i find myself uh, dealing with a lot of problems doing that um, although it's quite easy to just uh, write uh, text and basically use the spell checker from the the Word uh, app and you can basically fix a lot of your typos there. Uh, but the truth is that uh, I did miss a lot of control. Whatever format you think you, uh, you may think that you are applying to your book in, the, in Word is just wasted effort because most of those formatting uh, styles are going to be deleted once uh, you export your book into the final form. So basically I was dealing with formats the entire week, I believe, uh, until I just decided to buy a book about formatting um, eBooks for the Kindle. There is actually a lot of books about, about that, how to write a book, how to write a nonfiction book, uh, how to format a book. And although I find some uh, useful tips here and there, uh, the truth is that, uh, is that I uh, I fail to find uh, the details that I need to actually know, uh, not just how to actually write a book for the Kindle, uh, but, m but how to actually do it in the, in the most, uh, in, the, in a proper way. Uh, so to speak. So uh, I try writing using the Kindle Create, uh, yet many uh, styling things that I wish to implement uh, were uh, they weren't just they didn't work. For example, there is something called drop caps, and that's basically um, a special uh, capitalization of the first letter of a, of a chapter. 
Uh, it's basically a really, really, really big letter at the start of a paragraph. And it's, it's a, a really nice thing to have. Um, yet I was unable to, to implement that correctly using Kindle Create even. So uh, I did ask uh, a couple of times on forums. Uh, there is a lot of people uh, interested in writing books actually. There is a lot, of, there is a large, quite a big community of writers out there. So I find myself uh, uh, receiving a lot of, uh, of of advice from people that are actually trying to do this as a professional thing. Um, then I find myself in a forum and I discover that uh, somebody uh, uh, mentioned that um, I should not actually use or be looking for an application that allows me to write books uh, for the Kindle. I should, I can actually code them myself using HTML and CSS. And basically, an Amazon Kindle book is uh, an static website in the sense that you can actually code the document as a single HTML document uh, with CSS, um, um, you can actually use CSS to apply styling to the book and you can do um, even complex things that you are not allowed to do with Kindle Create, like tables, for example. So the topic of my book is um, a very interesting one for myself. Um, but before talking about that, uh, I may like to finish this section by saying that discovering that um, Kindle books are actually static websites uh, was a little bit uh, disappointing at the, at the beginning, uh, yet it does make uh, it does make sense because uh, what better thing to do with HTML but uh, uh, but text documents and especially books, so you can even import pictures. Um, if you are a website developer, a front uh, front end developer, you already know how to write Kindle eBooks. Well, you are closer than most people anyway. Um, so let's talk about um, the differences that I find between regular websites and what I already uh, found myself doing when I started uh, writing the the eBook. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there it is. There is another segment there. It is still, um, it's a still processing, so let's add, uh, let's add a new one, why not? So, when I started working with uh, uh, with formatting my ebook, um, I discovered pretty soon that um, not all tags and not all styles, you cannot just write uh, an static website and hope that the entire thing is going to translate just fine uh, for a Kindle ebook. Uh, so uh, there, it was a really big challenge at the beginning. Yet as uh, as I was learning the rules, um, most of the rules, by the way, are not written. Um, most of the rules uh, you have to find out by yourself by trial and, and error. Um, although there is a there is an official PDF guide. Uh, there is a PDF document. Uh, I don't remember the name really, but it's a, a it's a style guide for Kindle books. So you can basically download that directly from from Amazon. Maybe you can Google it. Uh, I don't remember the exact name of the document, uh, but I find it out as a Amazon style guide for eBooks uh, for the Kindle for the Kindle devices and. Uh, it is quite an, uh, an extensive document describing uh, the details of how to actually code um, 
an actual book for the Kindle using HTML and CSS. Um, you are going to find there uh, a lot of rules that you need to abide for in order to code your own books. So um, it actually teaches you the rules to uh, create a logical index, which is basically an index that is uh, used by the Kindle device and it does not appear as part of the book. Uh, it does appear as um, it does appear as part of the user interface for the Kindle device. So uh, whenever you push the go to button on the Kindle uh, interface, you will find yourself uh, looking at an index and that's called the logical index. You define that um, that index uh, in a file that has this st the extension ncx. Um, the format of the, uh, that extension um, is used by the Kindle to know where is the logical index. The content of this file, uh, the file can be named whatever, uh, yet it must be added to the manifest of the book. That's another, another file. And the contents of the logical index file is basically an XML structure. Um, uh, and this um, is basically a list in XML of links that, uh, um, that are basically, uh, this is basically the logical index of the book. So whenever a person opens your book and pushes the go to button, he is going to be able to, to access this index. And he can move through your book uh, uh, in very interesting ways. So you can basically list your chapters, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, add that to the logical index and call it a day. However, uh, when time pass, I find myself defining a lot of chapters for, for my book. Um, and those chapters, uh, my intention was to nest uh, to nest those chapters into into each other. So I was basically building uh, a chapter with sub chapters inside um, and I didn't uh, figure out how to actually create uh, nested chapters in, inside one another until I read in a, uh, in a forum that uh, chapters inside the NCX file um, they are added uh, by using a, a special uh, uh, key name, I don't remember the name, uh, NAT points. So these NAT point tags are basically used to create a navigation point for your index. Uh, the thing is that you can actually nest these tags because they, uh, they work as an XML file anyway. So you can nest uh, a navigation point inside another navigation point. And this is how you create sub chapters inside your index. Um, it is a pretty interesting thing indeed. And another f interesting file that you are going to be working on is one called the OPF. And we are going to be talking about that next. Okay. Uh, there we go. So I just added another section here. So, uh, well, let's continue with the flow. Um, there is a file that you can name whatever you want, yet the extension must be OPF. This is another XML format file. And the purpose of this file uh, is basically to create a manifest of your book. Uh, you start by describing uh, the name of your book, who's the author, who's the publisher, um, and a lot of more uh, specific um, details about your book. Yet the main thing about this file is actually the manifest and the guide. So first the manifest is a list of the files that um, 
that are going to be um, building your book. Uh, for example, your CSS files, those can be added. Uh, image files, those can be added too. You may actually use picture for your book. Um, the truth is that uh, in the documentation, it reads that uh, you don't need to add neither CSS files or images files. Uh, these files are actually added uh, during the, the compiling process uh, from your HTML files it's themselves. So you don't really need to add them to the manifest, yet if you do so, uh, it's nothing wrong. Um, in, uh, files that are actually required in the manifest are the, the logical index file. That's the file that I just talked about previously the ncx and uh, every single html file that builds that uh, that's actually the text of your book so html files are basically the chapters of your book although you can uh, create a single html file and write your entire book inside that i don't really recommend it because it's going to be really hard to find anything there and modify um, uh, your book altogether because since everything is in a single monolith block of text and uh, you are going to find yourself uh, lost very quickly so it's very it's really easy to me and i decided to just separate my book in chapters so every single html represents a chapter really and using the ncx file that's the logical index um, and the OPS file, I can define, um, uh, you know what, this is my logical index and these are uh, the chapter files that are going to include inside uh, with my book. Um, that's basically what the OPF uh, file does. Uh, in the end of the file, you are going to find uh, a guide section um, and you are required to add a couple of elements there. Uh, I did find myself uh, running into several bugs. Uh, what you are required to add in the guide are two things. One, uh, uh, the table of contents of your book. And this is not the logical index. Um, this is actually the table of contents in HTML format. You are um, not required maybe, but I... Uh, uh, yet you need to add a link to the actual table of contents. So during the, the my reading of the guidelines from Amazon, um, they mentioned that it is recommended that you create an HTML version of your index and don't rely entirely on the NCX file for that. So I did just that. I created an HTML version of my uh uh, of my index uh, in a separate file uh, in a toc.html file that's uh, for toc is for table of contents uh, so i was basically creating this table of contents myself in html and then i added that um, as a reference in the guide um, and i uh, comply with the rule then uh, the second requirement is in the guide section of the OPS file uh, is the actual start of your book, the actual start of the text of your book. So I run into a couple of books there. Um, uh, the first one was that uh, even if I define um, the start of my book as one thing, uh, when I actually compile the book and I uh, push the go to button to open the logical index uh, and then I push the um, go to the start to the beginning of the book uh, I that link will actually take me into the middle of my table of contents so uh, I was uh, I never actually learned how to solve that really I do suspect that um, if you are writing a guide uh, in the inside the OPS file uh, you better don't change the uh, the title text, um, which is a property, an attribute uh, for the for the navigation point. I think 
um, there is an attribute called uh, title and by default uh, it is written as text uh, between double quotes so I changed that in order to um, assign a, an actual name to the title of that uh, and maybe that was the uh, what caused that uh, the book where my link will actually take me take me into the middle of the table of contents. But never mind that. That's boring stuff. Uh, the OPS file is basically um, uh, the definition of what your book is about. There is uh, the reading order is there also. I forgot about that. Uh, you can define the reading order. So if you build a lot of uh, HTML files and they represent section of your book. Uh, in, inside the OPS file, uh, you can set the actual reading order of those. So whenever the user is actually reading, if you have a special order, uh, here's the place where you can actually implement that. So whenever you need to move a chapter, uh, you know what, maybe this chapter, especially with non-fictional books, uh, it may happen that you may wish to move one chapter before the other because you feel like or you think that that's, uh, that's an order that makes more sense maybe. So here is one of the places that you need to check out that the order is actually correct. Don't just uh, update your index and your logical index. You need to actually update the OPS file too. So and that's basically what I have to say about the OPF files okay and once the uh, um, what I decided to do was to create the logical index and the HTML index and the OPS file um, and I already got a bullet point list at hand that I could use to basically create the chapter list beforehand. So um, I decided to create an HTML file for every single chapter. And I basically created uh, inside these HTML files, I created header ones uh, with the name of the chapter. I created header two for the subchapters and header trees that don't belong inside the index, but they exist there, are basically sub sub chapters. So I never w uh, went down uh, below two levels. I basically just uh, created my table of contents with uh, with two levels deep, and never dare to create another one. Um, I think that's way too convoluted to have more than two levels three is just too much for myself so that's my opinion anyway so after that i began uh, working on the text i did find um sample books from amazon too um, which came into inside a set file and there are several examples yet i base myself on the book that was called uh, kf8 Kindle format, which is basically uh, a guide of what you can actually do for a Kindle. And it is actually a tutorial about how to handle text, how to handle images, how to create uh, tables and tabulate data that way, how to use CSS. And the code is just right there. You can actually uh, open the HTML files and learn a lot. Uh, so I decided to copy and paste the CSS, um, the CSS files and use the same selectors that were defined there. And I was adding uh, extra things like uh, a custom font in order to have access to one of my favorite fonts, which is Hack. Uh, Hack is a, uh, uh, an open source, um, a font that I use because it's monospace and it's really good for developing software because uh, 
common characters like the lowercase l and uppercase i um, can be uh, confused between each other and maybe uh, number one uh, maybe the letter b uh, the uppercase b and the number uh, eight can be uh, very similar so during uh, long coding sessions more often than not some of the fonts uh, are very hard to distinguish so um, i really like hack so i added that font face using css uh, so I added the font, uh, the font files inside a folder, and then I added the font as uh, I was talking about a regular website. And the, the funny thing is that it actually works. Although I didn't decide to use that font for everything, Kindle eBooks in the guidelines, they uh, Amazon tells you that is not uh, encouraged that. Uh, even if you can, do not enforce the use of a single font uh, because most users may like to decide what fonts to use to read. So uh, just don't uh, remove that, um, uh, that option from them. So I basically use the hack font exclu exclusively for my uh, code sections. So there is a tag in HTML uh, which is named code basically and whatever you um, uh, get between between the code tag is going to be basically formatted as a monospace font so i decided to use the code selector in css and implement the hack font for that um, the for that tag basically so uh, whatever is between um, the code tag in html uh, that thing is going to be using the font face hack. So uh, that's basically it. I'm not enforcing any other font on the rest of the book. So that way the reader can actually select whatever font he wishes. Um, and that's basically it. So I began my, uh, my adventure of learning how to uh, style text. Yet most of the time that's not exclusively um an amazon kindle thing that uh, whatever i was actually learning was in the realm of uh, learning front-end development web development and styling with css basically most of the work was already done because i already used um, a pre-existing uh, style css and then I began uh, requiring the use of tables because my book was about database fundamentals and tables is one of the most, if not the most uh, uh, visual tool to represent whatever a table is inside a database. So let's talk about tables now. There we go. So we have now another section. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we are making a really big episode using just the phone actually. So let's get going. So uh, the time came where I actually needed to um, create uh, tables for my book because I was writing about databases. So the funny thing with tables is that HTML already had tables uh, way back in the day, um, at the end of the, of the 90s, uh, many web developers were not even called like that actually, uh, but many web developers uses, uh, were, use, were using tables in order to, uh, how do you say it? In order to create a layout for the website so if you want your website to have a, a very attractive layout, you were going to be playing with tables in order to create that layout. Um, 
So a lot of people in the 90s were basically table experts. Yet um, when CSAs came in, into the picture, all of that went away, thank thankfully, because uh, a better way to structure your website came uh, about in the in the 2000s, and that's CSS. So CSS came to alleviate the need of making beautiful websites easier. Uh, and, and the Kindle book is quite similar, although you, you don't really have too much power uh, with CSS because you are working with a, a book, not really a website. So multi-columns, uh, importing uh, JavaScript, importing a framework like Bootstrap is out of the question. So you are basically using CSS to format the text, the pictures, and the tables. And that's basically it. Um, there, is a, uh, there is documentation about what CSS uh, attributes you can actually use and what selectors you can actually use. And all that is in the Amazon guidelines for Kindle books. You can actually read it there. There is a lot of information there yet. Uh, a lot of details that I actually need to implement uh, some things. Those are not in the guide and they are referencing um, uh, another website that no longer exists. Uh, yeah, it seems like uh, that document have, uh, has not been updated in a long time. So. Uh, it is weird, to, it seems like a little bit weird to me that although Amazon's business uh, started as a book selling platform and now they even create their own readers, uh, I am, uh, uh, I sadly had to say that uh, I am disappointed that uh, Amazon's effort into documenting their own platform for creating ebooks is quite poor actually. Uh, one may imagine that if they want, if they really want the Kindle devices to succeed, they will do whatever they have at, uh, they will use whatever amounts of money necessary to create actual documentation. Uh, let's not talk about software, but just document um, whatever you need to create your book. There is already a lot of documentation out there, uh, yet I may like to, uh, th that is also true that most of the official Amazon documentation is, um, is just not enough because there are even rules that are not written and that writers uh, are stumbling uh, upon over and over again. Uh, and the problem with that is that uh, uh, Kindle authors, we are finding a hard time to figure out the rules, uh, um, especially if you want to your book to be the best it can be. Formatting is going to be a really big part of your time spent at writing the book. If you're writing a novel, I guess it's not a big deal because you may not use uh, uh, a lot of uh, artifacts from CSS or tables. It's going to be really weird that in the middle of your novel, you're going to write a table. In my specific case, since I am working with a non-fictional book about databases and tables uh, are basically the center spotlight of everything. So uh, I do need to create a lot of tables actually. Uh, but Besides that, if I decide to write a novel, uh, I guess that just writing text, uh, I can use a drop caps letter, I can do a, a really nice um, chapter name uh, thing there. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you are not working with, um, with complex artifacts, I guess uh, even Kindle Create is going to be more than enough for you. So writing your book in, in HTML code allows you to to have flexibility, um, uh, in, a, in and this flexibility m moves into the tables thing because uh, during my study of the source code for the sample, uh, the sample code for, for the book from Amazon, 
uh, I find I found out that um, uh, there is an actual table example there, which I base myself in order to create my own tables. And before the table, there is an image of the table on uh, on an image tag in HTML. Uh, that image was using a class called, I believe, uh, Mobi content. And below the table uh, does have an attribute class called uh, default content. So I did a little research about that and it turns out that not all Kindle devices are able to render tables. So if you open the book and uh, in an older device, in an older Kindle device, that device is not going to be allowed to render tables. Uh, there is also other uh, company devices uh, that, uh, or other uh, ebook readers that are not rendering tables. So these CSS classes allows you to work around that. So. If you open the book on a, kin an, on a recent Kindle device, you are going to be able to just uh, render the table normally. If that's not the case, um, the book is going to fall back by showing a picture of the actual table that you wish to see because you cannot render the, the table in the older device. So instead of rendering the table, you are going to see a picture of the table. So uh, that's a really nice workaround. I really like it that uh, uh, retro compatibility is a big thing for everyone, I guess, especially for people with older devices. And um, I, I've been, um, it's a nice, elegant solution. And I am still learning formatting for the Kindle, by the way. Uh, but I believe that um, once I finish this book, um, I'm going to be a change man, not just because of learning how to write books for the Kindle, but because uh, I am finding myself learning about the subject of databases while I am writing the book, uh, ordering my thoughts and trying to explain them clearly. Um, that is showing me that I actually lack in a lot of aspects for for that topic itself, for databases. So I am learning more about databases fundamentals myself, and I'm transcribing that into the book. So uh, as I wish that this book is going to become a tool for helping people that are starting in the business of databases anyway. So I just decided that I wish to do this book right. So I'm doing that, I guess. And who knows, maybe this book is going to be famous someday. Maybe nobody's going to care but me. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to become a changed man once this book is over. Especially now that I need to rebuild my self-confidence and self-respect from the ground up. So I guess that's it for the episode today. Um, this is an adventure. I don't think that this is going to be the last episode where I'm talking about my experience with the book. <coughs> so I expect that um, you have been entertained so far and thank you for listening to my rambling today. And this episode ha has been recorded uh, using my, my smartphone on the Anchor app. And I hope that the quality is, um, is really good, I guess. So thank you for coming in and see you later. Goodbye. So there is another section. Uh, that's going to be the last uh, part of the of the episode, I believe. Let's let's write the name ready. Mm -hmm.
And there we go. So, um, just to finish uh, this little video here, uh, and before we actually leave, <laughs> this is going to be a really long video. Maybe I, I need to actually uh, edit this in the future or create a very short version of this, uh, but never mind. Uh, in order to save the episode, you just need to uh, to click publish. That's the purple button on the top right. And now you need to describe your episode here. A couple of uh, things that I always do is add the title of the episode first, obviously. And this is going to be uh, something really brief because this is going to appear on many uh, mobile apps anyway. So if you type a very long um, title, uh, the the listener is not going to be able to know what you're talking about really. And another thing that I don't like to do is to type in uh, two things. One, the word podcast, because the listener already know that this is a podcast. And second, uh, the number of the episode or the season. So I don't put that in the title of the episode. So I'm going to type just the title. It's going to be And that's basically it, writing an Amazon Kindle book. Uh, that's more than enough for this episode. So the last thing that I need to do here is writing the description of the episode. Uh, since I don't have uh, a bullet point list uh, or anything really, I'm just going to type whatever comes to my mind now. So let's see. And I talk about my experience writing my first book about database fundamentals. And there we go. Uh, so that's a, a good enough description. Uh, I do believe that not many people does actually read these descriptions anyway. So um, I tend to make something uh, short and just describe what the episode is actually about. And, um, it's not something too complex, I guess. Uh, now down below, you're going to have the opportunity to change um, the, the icon of the episode itself. I never do that. I just keep using the 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 artwork of the Learn to Code podcast and leave it like that anyway. And you can actually add the number of the season and the episode number. I don't move that either. I allow Anchor to assign the value automatically, so I don't have to deal with that. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, the the type of episode. You can choose there if you want it to be a full episode, a trailer episode, or a, a, a bonus episode. So this is a full episode, and I'm going to, uh, you can actually change the the date of, uh, of the publish. If you want this to be in the future, uh, yet yeah, you may like to record before now, you can publish now or publish in the future. This is really useful when um, when you decide to record a lot of episodes in a single day maybe, and you don't want to publish them all on, at the same day. You maybe, uh, maybe the weekend you record the entire episodes for the week, and then you want uh, every episode to be released in a single day uh, alongside uh, every single day on the week. So yeah, why not? You can do that. I'm going to publish it right now. Why not? So uh, I can add some text here. I'm going to use this for uh, for semantics reasons. The first one is going to be uh, the Amazon Amazon Create Tag Kindle 
snow kindle create tag book create tag so maybe that's just enough uh, maybe I like to add HTML create tag and CSS and I can add up until five tags I believe and that's just for semantics and to allow the users to find my episode easier I guess um, let's just uh, finish and there we go I already have a, a new episode 38 minutes talking uh, that's quite long actually now uh, finally uh, I do like to share my episodes on, on my social media I do use Twitter only that's my my main um, um, my main social network anyway so the most recent episodes of my podcast let's add uh, a hashtag here for podcast uh, writing an Amazon Amazon Kindle book so I like to add some hashtags for the most important words on the tweet uh, this way people can actually find this episode anyway easier so let's tweet about it and I just share that on Twitter I may like to share this uh, let's copy I think I can do more maybe A ver, let's see there we go let's look for my Kindle I mean LinkedIn there we go now um, I'm choosing LinkedIn for my as another main uh, social network anyway let's share this as a publication uh, there we go let's add hashtags Kindle Amazon Kindle uh, programming databases uh, book uh, Amazon yeah that's enough okay so I'm going to publish this on my uh, I'm publishing this on the Kindle I mean on the LinkedIn uh, social network my phone so as you can see uh, it is really easy to actually record an episode and just publish it. What's this? Building APIs with loot back. I don't know what that is. But never mind. And that's basically how you record and publish a, an episode using the Anchor app. Um, I do really recommend it. Even if you uh, don't think that uh, anybody is going to actually listen to it. Uh, sometimes I believe that just talking about stuff that you are interested in allows you to take things into perspective. So thank you very much and I guess that's all for today and see you later. Goodbye.